Welcome back. You're watching Your World at 10. Now, the G20 summit kicks off in London in less than 24 hours. There have been massive protests in the banking district in London City today, and things are likely to get ugly over the next few days. So in this backdrop, can the world's leaders thrash out a roadmap for an economic recovery? To debate that, we have with us tonight Lord Meghnath Desai, who is Professor Emeritus at the London School of Economics, that's LSE, at the Centre for the Study for Global Governance. Lord Desai, thank you very much for joining us this evening. There are so many Many things on the G20's agenda, coordinated fiscal measures, more regulation, more global coordinated regulation, the battle against protectionism. What do you think some of these most actionable points will be, points or areas in which we can expect some sort of concrete decision or at least movement forward over the next two or three days? I think uh, the first thing is that the fiscal stimulus need not be coordinated, it just needs to be parallel in the sense that we don't need to get everyone doing the same thing or the same amount, but just enough as they think fit. The Japanese may do more than the Germans and so on. Secondly, I think the, uh, the summit should prepare for international financial reform. Uh, this will take time, but they should set up a committee or something like that to report back in about six months how to reform the IMF, how to put more money into the IMF, and how to recycle the financial surpluses of Asia so that they don't all end up in American treasury bills. It's very important we get a real reform of the international financial system. And lastly, I think if they can do something about regulation, yes, but I think there are so many national differences about that, that that is not going to uh, come to any agreement. Lastly, I think they will all say they are against protectionism, but what I'd like to see, they actually act upon what they say, because every government is right now indulging in protectionism of one sort or another. And I can see that it's a democratic politics, but I think they should try and minimize protectionism as much as possible. All right, let me take your first point first, and that is to do with the reform of these international financial institutions such as IMF or ADB. This isn't the first time we're talking about reforming these institutions. This isn't the first time we're talking about enhancing their financing so that they can come to the help of emerging nations. It is a very fractious topic. Do you think that this time around, considering that we're looking for additional funds from surplus member nations, uh, whether these organizations will have access to the kind of financing they need to be able to throw a bigger, thicker, more effective lifeline towards the emerging markets. I think the important thing is in this crisis, the creditor nations, the financially powerful nations, are all from what used to be called the third world, China and India, to some extent Japan, which is in the first world. Asia is in a driving seat as far as money is concerned. And the control that the Western nations have exercised over IMF and World Bank has to be considered, there have been proposals for a long time, to rebalance the IMF. Now is the time to do it, and I'm sure that China and India and Japan will insist that if there is going to be reform of the International Monetary Fund, it will have to be with an eye on doing more for developing countries and really to try and be growth-oriented when they give help to developing countries and not be deflationary like IMF has been for the last 25 years. All right, I'll come to protectionism in just a bit because that was one of the other issues that you mentioned. But first up, do you think that there is likely to be considerable action taken in this meeting towards the creation of a global regulator, a supranational regulator, so to speak, that coordinates between various different financial markets, considering that most uh, countries have their own set of rules for their financial markets? Do you think that this is a viable option? I think, you know, I don't think we will get a sing single global regulator because there is no single global political authority to do back such a regulator. What may happen is the regulators will talk more to each other uh, continuously. And what has been happening until now is that people have followed a kind of a beggar my neighbor, po beggar my neighbor policy and saying, hey, don't go to America, we have a lighter regulation in the city of London and things like that. That kind of regulatory uh, dumping should be prevented and countries should agree, at least the major financial centers uh, should agree 
that they will have similar regulations and they will not shelter the rogue companies in that stock market because that is one of the problems. The Americans tried Sarbanes Oxley uh, as tough regulation and the, and the British said, hey, you know, don't go to Wall Street, come to London. I think that kind of behavior cannot be tolerated anymore. Well, one thing is for certain, uh, Lord Desai, that, you know, if there is going to be any additional regulation, it's definitely going to first come in the area of hedge funds, uh, entities that have as yet been completely unregulated across the Western developed markets. Uh, President Obama spoke of it last week. Gordon Brown spoke of, spoke of it today. What kind of action can we expect when it comes to the regulation of hedge funds? You know, I don't really understand this fuss about hedge funds. Only very rich people join hedge funds. And hedge funds either make a lot of money or they lose a lot of money. And I don't think they are at all responsible for any of the financial malaise. Banks, I can understand, one ought to regulate better because ordinary people resort to banks or insurance companies or even to some extent stock markets. But hedge funds are rich people's clubs and they can either take money or they can lose money and I don't know that why anybody uh, wants to regulate them. Yes, the rhetoric is very, very, very nice and I think at most what they will do is they will ask hedge funds to register themselves. Right now there is no requirement to register themselves with some uh, stock, stock exchange authorities, some regulatory authorities and that's what all you can do because these are grown up people who are spending their own money and you can't stop them from doing what they're doing. It's not their fault that the, that the financial crisis happened. It's the government's fault. All right, Lord, this, let me lastly come to the issue of financial protectionism. On the one hand, uh, leaders at the G20 will be working on coordinated fiscal measures, uh, coordinated regulatory policies. And on the other hand, we now have the rising specter of financial protectionism, especially in many of the Western world banks where governments have come to the assistance of private banks and because of that assistance are now able to demand that those banks lend only domestically and not that much internationally. This is a big cause uh, for worry in India or for countries like India where a lot of our capital is sourced internationally, whether it's uh, corporate loans or it's project finance or M&A finance. So uh, how dire or how serious is the situation of financial protectionism? What can be done to curb it? And the first thing to assert, which nobody has done, is that globalization was a good thing. If you now complain about financial protectionism, it is because it was globalization which was helping countries like India and developing countries everywhere to get funds in the private sector from the rich countries. And when people denounce globalization or capitalism on the other side, they want, they want to complain about financial protectionism. Now, financial protectionism is a bad thing, and I think what we really need to do is to restore the financial markets as they were 18 months ago. We need banks to be able to go out and make foreign loans. Now, I think that mainly it is London and New York which are much more global financial centers than any center on the European uh, continent. So I think London, London, as soon as it recovers its nerves, the two or three banks they have saved will have to get back into international lending. But right now, even now, there are a lot of banks, uh, you know, which have not been recapitalized by the government, which are perfectly free to lend abroad. What is needed is a restoration of confidence. A restora and the G20 have to say that they are there not to restrict the system, but to restore the system. Yes, reform, but restore the system as it, as it was, because the flow of money is as helpful to developing countries as to developed countries. And we need to get back into that kind of healthy, large flows of private funding from the rich country banks to the poor country industries. All right, Lord Desai, thanks very much. We do hope that this meeting makes some headway when it comes to that restoration point, as you put it. Well, Lord Meghnas Desai, they're in conversation with us on what can be expected from the G20.